tell me something. Why were you so sure those voices weren't coming from you? Well, first, I know I'm not psychotic. I hope your other reason's more convincing. And second, the voice kept calling me Bruce. In my mind, that's not what I call myself. What do you call yourself? Oh, yeah. I suppose you would. The Adventures of Batman. Welcoming you to the new adventures of Batman. Welcome to episode 47 of Batman Animation, a Batman on film podcast, revisiting the animated adventures of the Cape Crusader. I'm senior contributor Javi Trujillo, and joining me today is the father of Batman on film, Bill Jet Ramey. Bill, how was your Father's Day? Father's Day was good. Um, yeah, it was good. I'm just thinking... I. I did. I had a well. You can see it, of course. I mean, what what car? I get a Batman card. That's what I get every year. What else would it nice. be? Nice, right? So, yeah, I got. Uh, I think I've pain. gotten that card from yeah. my father once or twice because okay. it's Adam yes. West, and that was yes, it is. That was his Batman. The yes, card that I've, you just showed is is Adam West on it. Got and that's that one. My dad's Batman, so I've so, gotten that for him. I think, I, a few times. I, I, think I have last year's over here on the shelf but um that so that's the only batman related thing I always it's always a batman card but i got a uh painting of my dog graceland who is the got, official mascot of bof yes, so yes it's still kind listen, of batman related she makes cameos from time to time and you can also at the end of every stay to the very end of the social hour there's a little uh graceland appearance at the very end every on those shows but and i also got a hawaiian shirt with her face all over it which was <laughs> that's cool. awesome and an immersion blender which what do you, you know what are you gonna make with that I, I you know i'm into making these i was telling pete on the social hour i've become uh obsessed with making different version different types of salsa and hot sauces i mean i even got i mean i've got the mason jars with i got the, the mason jar sealer machine and i've got the the bottles the hot sauce bottles everything you know so feel free to ship any of that yes south on i-35 yes I, I may i I, could, I will send something i have i gotta make up uh, a new batch here here shortly I'm, i don't have any currently in stock i got some hot sauces i made chul my own cholula which turned out really that. good yeah i was gonna ask out, you about that turned out good so anyway uh i've you know i cook quite a bit and i've always wanted an immersion blender so i got an immersion blender but there you go nice that that's and that's all the witty banter you're gonna get from me in this show <laughs> We already talked the weather off mic, so yes. If you're here for weather updates in Texas, I'm sorry. That's that's not this episode. Here it is. Here's how it's hot. Okay, <laughs> it's it will hot. be hot until October. There you go. That's the only update you need. Well, in this banner year of the 85th anniversary of Batman, it's fitting that we touch on some milestones. I mean, Batman 89. We're as of this recording, we're four days away from that anniversary. But today, uh, Batman Beyond is turning 25 this year. So we're shining a bat signal on episode seven of season one, Shriek, which originally aired March 13th of 1999. Uh, the synopsis reads, an inventor of a sound-based weapon plots against Bruce Wayne. And of course, Will Friedel is Terry McGinnis' Batman, Kevin Conroy is Bruce Wayne, Sherman Howard is Derek Powers, and Chris Mulkey is Walter Shreve, a.k.a. Shriek. And it was written by Stan Berkowitz and directed by Kurt Geta. Uh, so this episode has some pretty unique elements, starting with the opening, 
we see the series villain Derek Powers sitting in complete blackness. And as we come to find out, he's been given a sound demo for some new tech by Walter Shreve, who just developed a new sound suit that generates ultra low frequency vibrations that can be aimed in any direction. And Shreve shows how destructive they can be, but Powers is unimpressed, especially after bailing out Shreve's company. What did you think of this opening bill and, and Shreve's suit design? I, I think, um, I mean, you can, if you just see the suit, like you, someone just showed you the picture out of context, mm -hmm. it could look, it's kind of, you know, your, your stereo, stereotypical super villain looking suit, nothing, you know, could be taken silly by some, but in context, it makes sense. If it's, you know, it's a, a sound suit, it looks like it. Almost like they're like these subwoofer looking yeah. things, you know, on it that he uses to generate the the effects that the suit the, the of the suit's power. So yeah, I mean in the context, yeah, it was fine. We um I mean he's got he does look futuristic and I like the black and white. Yeah. I don't know, the black and white color scheme works really well. His his hands though, because because of how the, his suit works, like you mentioned the subwoofers, like it kind of gives him like a bear claw appearance. Yeah. At times like these huge mitts. Um, but it, it makes sense. Cause that's where the emitters come out from. Um, it's gotta be really difficult for him to grab things though. Yeah. But he kind of reminds me a little bit of the Spider-Man villain, the shocker, just because of the vibrations and, and the sound yeah. aspects of it. I can see that. Um, They've actually made a figure of him for McFarlane. Did you pick that one up for the office? I do not. I didn't. I didn't even know there. There yeah, was it's, one. It's a it's a build a wave figure. So he comes with pieces from that Future's End storyline that they did. It was like a week. I think it was a weekly comic, but it wound up having like this weird Batman Joker hybrid thing. And so you can get the pieces to build this weird, like half okay. Batman, half Joker monster thing. Um, but uh, cutting to a Wayne Powers boardroom meeting, Bruce is petitioning the board to not purchase the historical district and bulldoze it. So lots of corporate intrigue on Batman Beyond. He asks for a stockholders meeting next week so they can put it to a vote. And Powers, of course, isn't happy by this. Bruce then takes Terry on a tour of the area, showing him the theater where his parents were killed. Um, how did this nostalgic scene play for you, Bill? Uh, it was, I think it was a pretty good scene because um, Terry talks about, you know, wouldn't you want this torn down because you can move on and forget about it. And, you know, he bring, Bruce brings up, do you want to forget about your father and how he died? And, you know, it was kind of like, oh, that's fair. You know, it's kind of like, you know, what Terry says. So, yeah, it was, it, it worked. You see the motivation behind Bruce. And not only, you know, he also is, it appears to me he's wanting to renovate that area, you know, as well. And not just tear it down and put up some kind of corporate. Yeah. Social uh, media buildings and whatnot. Like, yeah. Social media likes to get on their kick every now and then of like Batman and how he just goes and beats up poor people and doesn't do anything. And like, this is just another example of how Bruce Wayne does invest in his community and, and, you know, tries to make things better, not just by Batman, yeah. but financially. Yeah. And it's, it's, yes. I like seeing the, the preservation of, not just his history, but like of the prior show. And as they go inside police headquarters, like we see a wanted poster uh, for the Joker, just, just in case you didn't know what the Joker looked like, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I would think. Um, and it's funny because they use the, um, the, at the time, what was the most recent look for him, which was like the new Batman adventures look. So he's got like the black triangle eyes. Mm -hmm. and the smile isn't as pronounced. It's just the thin line of a smile, but um, that's when Shreve adorned in his suit strikes and Terry switches to Bruce, to Batman to get Bruce out. 
Batman asks Bruce if he knows him, to which Bruce replies, not one of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you like how they tried to highlight and make new villains at the dawn of the show? Yes. Uh, I think it, I mean, it's been years, you know, and years. Bruce is what, in his 80s, basically, in Batman Beyond? So most of them wouldn't be around. I did like when the others would would show up, you know, the the few of them we got, you know, I know know, there was the the Mr. Freeze episode and whatnot. Um, We got, you know, Return of the Joker. Yeah. Bane. So, but yeah, it would just be natural progression that there would be new villains to, to, uh, for this, this, this Batman to face in Gotham city. They mention it in either the commentary for this episode or one of the special features, just how they didn't want to do like two face beyond. And then next week it was like Catwoman beyond. Yeah. And I think they really hit the ground running with like new villains. And like, to me, they're pretty memorable. Maybe not the, one that's like a Craven the Hunter type character. I can't even I forget their name right now. Yeah. But like Ink and Shriek and Spellbinder, Blight. Blight. Like, yeah. Like he, they came up with a really good road. Well, there's, yeah, there's a handful you like. can name right off. You know, if someone said name Batman Beyond villains, the, the ones you mentioned and we said Blight at the same time. Yeah. That's, that's the ones you would, you could, you could knock out pretty quickly. But as a as a fan, you know, twenty five years ago, like I liked just the acknowledgement that there was something that happened before. Mm-hmm. Like I like seeing that that Joker poster, you know, mm-hmm. on the wall. I thought that was a pretty pretty nice touch. Um, so Bruce gets hospitalized during due to the attack, frustrating power since Bruce is still around to convince the shareholders. Shreve has a plan using his knowledge of sound of voice commands to the recuperating billionaire. And it seemed, it seems like Shreve is trying to convince Bruce to jump out of his hospital window. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Bruce fights the voices commands, even though the voice says that it belongs to Bruce. And of course, nobody at the hospital believes him. Um, was it hard for you to see uh, Bruce in this condition? He starts to get a little. I've got to, yeah. I got to think back to when I first saw this. That's what I try to do when we do these. And I was wondering. I remember going, okay, where are they, where are they going with this? But at the same time, you know, it's not. You're kind of with Bruce. You know, it's you know he's not psychotic. You know, and you you know the where the voices are coming from because. Um, he had demonstrated the powers in the very beginning, you know? Yeah. So it wasn't a big, a big reveal that what was going on here, but yeah, I, I thought it was a good plot device to try to, you know, it's something, it's definitely something that Derek powers would back and be behind, you know, trying to basically get rid of Bruce. <laughs> so, uh, so he wouldn't be a nuisance when it comes to the company. I think there is a bit of tension to the scene. Like, like you said, like we, you can pretty much deduce that it's not a voice in his head, but given that, that Bruce has a head injury and he's so much older and we, they showed in prior episodes, like he's not, you know, he's not at his peak anymore. I think having that, knowing that going in, like it gives it that sense of, of tension that maybe this could influence him in some way. And, yeah, not, not that I think he would like jump out, but I, I definitely felt the the struggle of it. Yeah, of him, you know, trying to cope with everything and and people just kind of brushing him off as like it's the crazy old millionaire who's getting angry and mm-hmm. maybe he's got sundowners or something. And and the, yeah. the nurses seem to kind of brush him off. Yeah. Um. Um. So before we move on in the storyline, we're going to take a quick word. For our sponsors.
So Terry tries to follow leads in the Batcave, later heading out to investigate Shreve disguised as a pizza delivery guy. Um, and of course, neophyte that he is, he eventually gives himself away, leading to a confrontation with Shreve. Uh, how did the scene work for you? Did you, did you like seeing um, Terry put on a fake accent and try and go undercover? It was um, I'm trying to think of, I don't think I had a, a reaction to it either way, positive, negative. I think it's just, it was just, to me, it was just part of the storyline getting from where we were at to the next, basically toward the, you know, the, to wrap it up, you know, him going, doing detective work and help figuring out what was, you know, where this, what, what was going on with the source and, and uh, where this was coming, you know, where it was coming from, why this was happening. I liked the initiative. Like it, it shows that he's learning from Bruce, you know, about like, he's doing the research in the bat cave. We get to see Ace again. Um, <laughs> then like his, I guess it's supposed to be kind of like a East coast accent that he's doing. He's like, Oh, I, I got this pizza. Is this for you? I, and just the fact that, yeah. Like I see what he's trying to do, but like the fact that he would think that this guy would just invite a stranger in to I share a free pizza. I with don't, him. I, you know, I don't know what the, the accent was all about because yeah. I mean, he's not and and, He's not in disguise or anything, you know? Yeah, he just he's not like, hat. Yeah, he's not like <laughs> doing his version of Matches Malone or something. So it was yeah. just... I just remember now you bring it up, I remember thinking, why is he talking like that, you know? Yeah. I think it would have been kind of funny if they would have brought... I don't think they do. Like, it would have been funny if, if it was like, this is his pizza delivery character that he likes to play to... Like like you said, his, voice, his version of Matches Malone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not a great disguise. And, and just the fact that he would think that a stranger would, would just yeah welcome him in and like, just start chatting. Like, I mean, it's a, it's a 20 minute cartoon that's supposed to be aimed at kids so that you're not supposed to look at it too deeply, but yes. you know, if yes. an Uber driver showed up in my house with like a free pizza, I wouldn't like, Hey, come on in and let's, let's yeah. share it together. Like, yeah no, that's not happening um so bruce is now in the psych ward for hearing voices he's they moved him out of the hospital into a different room altogether and because of the last scene the police are now on to shreve powers dubs him shriek and orders him to kill batman if he interferes again so terry as batman goes to visit bruce who wants Batman to check for hidden speakers. And the cool part is like Batman gets an intuition and rips off Bruce's bandaid, revealing where the sound is coming from. Uh, did this scene make you feel more confident in seeing Terry as Batman? It, um, here's the thing with, with Bat as much as I like Batman beyond Bruce was always still Batman to me. And okay. Terry was just like his way to physically have Batman. Is that you know what I'm with? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he becomes like the version of the suit. Yeah. Basically it was never I so so Terry doing things differently and are not being as as much of a greatest of a Batman as Bruce. That that doesn't bother me or I wouldn't say that's even, a, it would be a criticism of mine. So how, you know, it's, um, you know, it was really Bruce. He was the one like he, he knew there had to be, it had to be coming from somewhere, you yeah. know? And it seems like Terry is even kind of like, there's nothing there. I mean, there's not, there's nothing in the light. There's nothing. I'm not tearing up the walls of this hospital, you know? Until they figure out, you know, he's, what does he say? It's, uh, 
that's an awfully big bandage for yeah a small for such wound. a small cut yeah 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 no, I I thought it was a good way to highlight you know the the fact that Terry like we just talked about earlier like Terry is learning and mm -hmm. and being able to pick up on these things cuz that's like that's a key element of Batman for me and no one's going to be no one's ever going to have the drive and determination of Bruce Wayne but it it's good in establishing that that Terry's not just some dumb kid that he's picking up on all this stuff and getting better at it as as he goes on um so I, I just, I, I like the whole, like Bruce is still thinking like a detective trying to mm -hmm. reason it out mm -hmm. and, and Terry's right. Um, so that leads to Batman confronting Shriek at a factory. And to me, the coolest scene of the episode, Shriek uses his suit to strip out all sound, mm -hmm. but Batman, so he can locate him. Um, did you feel disoriented watching this? It was a little, uh, sensory um mind freak in a way because it's it it's like your mind is telling you you're watching it without the sound done yeah you know that's what it looked you know and, and but that's what it, so it was supposed to look like because it was supposed, supposed to be it sound was muted out so yeah it was uh i thought it was cool i thought it was a cool effect well i mean this isn't my first time watching this like i saw it when it aired had the dvds had the blu-rays and even but watching it to prep for this again like it still caught me off guard to yeah where i'm like did did the disc freeze did yeah something that, go yeah. out and, yes. and even knowing that it was coming like it still it threw me off um it just it's a really it was a really effective way to make the scene unique and and stand out and show off his powers um but of course, Ace can hear the sounds mm -hmm. and Bruce sets him off to help Batman and Ace saves Batman from being run over and a well-placed Batarang hits Shriek's gauntlets and overloads them, funneling in a cacophony of sounds and defeating the villain. Uh, how did you like the conclusion for the battle? Did, did Ace's inclusion work for you? Well, I'm an Ace fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of Ace. So anytime Ace is included and especially when he can uh have a big role in uh in uh batman's success i'm 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 a proponent of that i um uh, the only thing is maybe i missed something so I'll, i i'm assuming that because we he can't then he he can't hear terry can't hear uh well so he doesn't shriek know that at the end when, when it's all said oh, yeah, and yeah. done when Shriek is defeated and the helmet's off and all that, we learned that he he can't hear. So I'm assuming what well, he just got a like it was so loud it just yeah when this when the when the sound came back on, it just blew out his hearing. Right? Is that yeah? That's that's the inference because Bruce even yeah. says yeah. like he lost his hearing if it ever comes back, kind of thing. Um, yeah, I am I'm definitely pro pro ace over here. Hashtag put ace in the Batman part two. Yeah. Uh but I there's um the scene where Bruce sets him off to go help Terry. Like I just love how they light the interior of the Batmobile. Mm -hmm. Like it's anytime they're in the Batmobile, it's just all red. Yeah. I, and red just works for Batman for me. I, I don't know if it's in the animated series or now you know red is very prominent in the batman in the batman part yeah. one so i i just i like just the lighting the mood that it set um and the shadows they had on on bruce and ace and and you know having ace come to the rescue is cool but it's still it's still terry that you know eventually defeats him and even even more effective was the the kind of the ringing in the ears when mm -hmm. you go into Shriek's perspective and you can hear like the muffled barking of Ace, but mm -hmm. it's just that high pitch noise like in surround sound, like it it just mm -hmm. plays so well. It, it's a little cheesy as they kind of like do these like pullouts of like the whole city, and he's just like, no, yeah, 
Yeah. But, but still just the, the initial shock of, of like the ringing that shriek is hearing mm-hmm. and how everything else is drowned out. Like it, it was kind of chilling, you know, in a way, not that he didn't deserve it, but I, I just that whole like couple minute sequence is just so well done. Mm-hmm. I'm with um, you. And, and of course, you know, the meeting gets held now that Bruce is out of the hospital and people vote for Wayne over powers. And like the fight was the coolest scene, but favorite, favorite scene as Bruce and Terry leave. Terry asks, why were you so sure those voices weren't mm-hmm. coming from you? To which Bruce replies, the voice kept calling me Bruce in my mind. That's not what I call myself. And if that moment's not great enough, like we talked about it on our last episode that we did. Um, Terry says like, well, what do you call yourself? And, and Bruce just shoots him that look. Like there's no yeah. dialogue. He just gives him that look. And, and Terry follows up with, oh yeah, I suppose you would. And then he lowers his voice and confidently proclaims, but that's my name now. <laughs> and, and Bruce then retorts back with tell that to my subconscious Mm -hmm. and and just how perfect is that ending that that to was um to me like you're never really like i said before you're you're not concerned that bruce is going crazy or he's actually hearing things you 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 pretty much know where it's coming from because it's set up from the very beginning of, of the episode To me, this was kind of the twist that you see Bruce, you're kind of concerned about it when he's having, you know, where's it coming from? You know, he's freaking out. And you get to that part of that to me is like the twist or, you know, the big reveal is that, well, this is how I don't, I've called myself Batman in my head, you know, essentially. So yeah, I really like it. It's stuck with me all these years, you know, Um, it had been a long time since I, watched this episode or even seen this particular scene, but that exchange and, and that dialogue with, uh, with this aged Bruce Wayne has always stuck with me to the point where we brought it up the last time we were doing a Batman animation. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's definitely one of the highlights of this series, I think. And it just it it sells both characters' positions so well. Like, and Terry's got like that confidence of youth, of like, well, I'm Batman now. Like, he doesn't necessarily seem arrogant about it. He's just, especially after this episode where we've seen him be, do more Batman things. Like, he's starting. I remember feeling like he's starting to feel more like Batman to me, but not at the expense of Bruce necessarily. Um, so just overall, like, how does this one rank for you in the whole Batman well, just Beyond with that pantheon? Uh, it's 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 one that stuck out to me. So, um, so for that reason, I would say uh, I, I like it quite a bit. I mean, I remembered it. So, and it's been we said twenty five years. I don't know if I've seen it in twenty five years. Probably, I can't. I know I've seen it since. I just can't tell you when or how long ago it was. And that last exchange also goes to just my thing with Batman Beyond, where I always, I always looked at Bruce Wayne as still Batman, you know, and this kind of just strengthens that, that perspective. So do you feel like this episode validates both characters as Batman? I, th- Yes. In a way that I think, um, I think Bruce also still feels that he is Batman. He's just not physically capable. And Terry is, provides that aspect of Batman. You know what I mean? Uh, But as we progress, um, Bruce does become more, accepting of terry as as batman yeah over time it 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 definitely didn't start off that way yeah i mean you get where he was like shutting off the suit yeah (laughs) like some of the first 
you get to the you know get you get to epilogue that Justice League episode, and we talked about that on one of these shows before. It's um, that's kind of the the epilogue. It's a good title because it comes to fruition, and well, not to get into that episode, but watch it. You'll know what I'm talking about. That's like, or go listen to our podcast when we talked about epilogue. I think you know, like looking back at it, you know, there there was definitely a segment I would say of fans that, you know, you had to. It, it was hard to buy into someone who isn't Bruce Wayne being Batman. Mm -hmm. And especially so fresh off of Conroy, who was mm -hmm. like in the middle of becoming like the voice of Batman for a whole generation. Like he'd already cemented himself as an icon by this point as it, as it was for a lot of fans. Um, and I think like this episode is, a, is an important crossroads for, for people to really embrace this new show because mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't putting Bruce down to build Terry up. Like there is that, that partnership that we've talked about it a few times and it, it's, he's kind of like um, Wally West in a way Terry is because he's, he's got to prove himself. Like so many people saw Barry Allen as the goat flash. And obviously Bruce Wayne is the best Batman, but like, both the fans and Terry are going on this journey of, you know, Terry accepting mm -hmm. himself as Batman. And this episode, I feel is like just such a key component in that evolution of being embraced and him taking on the role more effectively. Good. Yeah. That's a good point. So, good point. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's going to do it for us today. Um, where can people find you, Bill? Batman Dash. You on, yeah, I will. I, I, absolutely batman dash on dash film.com just go there i'll plug i just uh for batman 89's 35th anniversary i had um uh michael uslin you may have heard of him a uh, friend of batman on film longtime friend of batman on film the uh the man responsible essentially for for that for that movie and um this genre to be to be yeah. honest talk about um about about batman 89 and it's not it's a different type of discussion it is it, i i i've interviewed michael in the past and you can read the interviews you can watch the interviews where we talk about the whole process of getting batman 89 made this was more of uh its legacy mm -hmm. the legacy of batman 89 uh not only with batman films the batman film franchise but the comic book movie genre as well and so I, 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 I highly recommend it, not for me, but for to listen to what Michael has to say about that. I mean, you and I probably wouldn't be talking to each other right now if it wasn't for that movie. That like, I love Batman before that movie. I know you love Batman before that movie, but it, it you can't, you can't quantify it, you know? And I don't even, I don't even know if it's my favorite batman movie or you know quote the best batman movie but it, it's certainly you can't argue its place in history or the franchise i mean living through batman 89 like that hype was it's surreal thinking about it now just that was brought up yes all that's brought up with michael it's um yeah. i even asked him if it's the most important comic book film of all time. And I'll let you, you got to listen to for his answer. Yeah. Uh, I agree with his answer, but yeah, good stuff. And people who say not to get on the Batman 89 tangent, but we did bring it out. Um, uh, we did bring it up that I've seen younger folks say, uh, Batman 89, that Batman, it was not that big. You, if you didn't live it, yeah. if you didn't live it, then, in a, in, uh, in yes. a pre MCU world. Yes. Oh my God. If you didn't live it, you don't, you don't, it's what is it? The, uh, if you know, you know, you know, a uh, little acronym when you're texting or whatever. Yeah. 
if you know, you know, and you had to yeah. be there. So there you go. You know, but yeah, check that out. Cool. Check that out. And uh, obviously you can find me on Batman on film as well. Writing comic reviews. Uh, this week we just had Catwoman 66 come out. Um, Teeny Howard has expressed that 68 is her last issue, I think. Um, and yeah, Batman, Raven the Bold, Batman and Robin, all those reviews. Uh, I just hosted an episode of the main Batman on film show with Peter Vera as my guest and Trey Jackson. Happy birthday to Trey if you're listening to this. Uh, where we talked the Batman first night, which is an excellent 85th anniversary look back at an early case in the Batman's career, but from like a 21st century perspective and mm -hmm. definitely very talented art and story and just beautiful prestige plus Batman black label book. If you haven't read that, the trade is coming out, I think in November, but you can get the single issues. Now it's stories done. It's complete and uh, give that show a listen. Cause it was, it was a good conversation, a lot of fun. So, and of course, Batman animation, a couple episodes every month here on BOF. Uh, but that's going to do it for us today. Um, go out, watch some Batman cartoons, rewatch Batman 89, and announcer Rachel will take us out. Thanks for listening to Batman Animation, a BatmanOnFilm.com podcast revisiting the animated TV and film adventures of the Caped Crusader. Follow Batman Animation on Twitter at Batman Animation. Follow BOF on Twitter at The Batman on Film. Follow Jet on Twitter at Batman on Film. For Jet and Team BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Batman on Film, authoritative, definitive, the original. Established in 1998.